Amen. Amen. Good evening to each and every one of you, you who viewing YouTube live and you in the sanctuary. Let's give God some good. God bless you. Amen. We do thank God. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together. Amen. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank God for another exciting Thursday night Bible study here at the U, the Underground Christian Center. I tell you, I'm going to give you a second. Amen. To share this link with someone. Amen. Glory be to God. Because in this day and time, I glory be to God. I come to find out that I need the word of God morning, noon and evening and night night. Glory be to God. I need the word to resident in my heart and my spirit while I'm sleeping. Amen. Because we're, de we're dealing with dangerous and perilous times this evening. Amen. Glory be to God. But God wants to equip us with his word. Amen. Through Bible studies. Amen. For coming together. Amen. And fellowship. Amen. So we can war off the uh, taxes of the enemy today. God, the onslaught of the enemy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something. And only we can do that if we attend Bible studies. Amen. If we attend right fellowship, amen, because every fellowship out there is not the right fellowship. Amen. Every fellowship out there is not of God. Amen. It's set up for the enemy. Amen. Glory be to God to what? To discourage you. Amen. To keep you off the path with God had sent. Amen. From keeping you from knowing the truth. Amen. But we here at the Underground Christian Center is determined. Amen. To spread God's truth. Amen. Yeah. Truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory be to God. I know y'all heard about the news. Amen. Glory be to God. YouTube, everything going around. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Amen. Holiness is still right. Amen. Glory be to God. Holiness is not what you wear. Amen. Holiness is a mindset when your heart and your body and your mind is clear. Amen. Walking in the things of God. Amen. I think the church, amen, got it twisted. Amen. Glory be to God. We allow the enemy to tell us how to do it. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm here representing the church girls. Amen. Glory be to God. Why? Because I'm a female. Amen. And I love the Lord. Amen. And I attend church. Amen. Glory be to God. Let me matter of fact, let me correct that. Amen. I am the living church. Amen. Glory be to God. And I am a woman. Amen. A church girl. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let the enemy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. To degrade the women of God. Amen. The children of God. Amen. Glory be to God. Know that we not wrestle with flesh and blood. Amen. We're not coming against Beyonce. Amen. Glory be to God. But we coming against that foul spirit. Amen. That have used her, amen, to the frame, amen, glory be to God, hallelujah, to taint what a church girl ought to be, uh, glory be to God, the word of God says, amen, glory be to God, without holiness, no man can see God, glory be to God, so if you think, glory be to God, hallelujah, that holiness is what you, what you wear, amen, glory be to God, now come on, you know you're not gonna wear anything, glory be to God, that's revealing, amen, you know you ain't gonna wear things like of the world, amen, glory be to God, but holiness is far more deeper than that. Holiness is the way of your mind, of your spirit, of your thoughts. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That is holiness. Amen. Glory be to God. And Hebrews 12, 14, amen, state this, amen, in the Amplified Clashes edition. Glory be to God about holiness. Uh, glory be to God. He said this, strive to live in peace with everyone, with everybody and pursue that consecration and holiness without which no man will ever see God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Church, you got to understand we serve a holy God. Glory be to God. We serve a righteous God. Glory be to God. So I come against the tactics of the enemy. Glory be to God. That tries to taint. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The women of God. The children of God. Amen. Glory be to God. We here in this hour. Amen. Is coming into Bible study, amen, to dismantle the lies of the enemy. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. It's so bad that I see, and it's a shame that all church people, not all of them, but some of them, amen, is falling in the traps of the devil. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Saying all kinds of stuff. Amen. And I just want to know, who taught you the word of God? I want to know, glory be to God, do you know the truth that's written in God's word? Glory be to God. You got to be holy. Glory be to God. And God is calling back his people, his church, you and I back to holiness. Amen. Glory be to God. Because he's saying without holiness, amen, we cannot see him. Amen.
that. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So that's why it's so important. Glory be to God. Church, amen. First of all, to stay in God's word. Stay in line with him. Amen. Stay close to his heart. I tell my children, amen. This is not the time, amen, to stray away from the word of God. This is not the time to stray away from the God of the Bible. Amen. The God of our salvation. But this is the time, amen, that I've been saying for the past year. Glory be to God. To stay close to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Because things are happening. Glory be to God. A blanket of deception, amen, had hit the church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the church can't see the forest through the trees. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. But there's one that stands in the midst of us. That's a holy king. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. There's one that stands in the midst of us today, God. In the name of Jesus, my God. Oh, God, that wants us to be free. Amen. Free in our minds. Amen. Glory be to God. Free to see his word. Amen. Glory be to God. He stands in the midst of us because he's waiting to deliver his people. Amen. Glory be to God. We serve a delivering God, church. Amen. And we serve a true God. Amen. We serve a holy God. Amen. We serve a righteous God. Amen. Glory be to God. So I know you already shared this link. And we do thank God once again. Amen. That you choose to click on to this link here at the UD Underground Christian Center for another electrifying Bible study. Glory be to God. I guarantee the word of God. Amen. Pastor Duff is going to break this word down with the help of the Holy Ghost. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because God desires to teach his people. God desires to quit his people. And only time we can do that if we attend fellowship. Amen. If we attend Bible studies, if we attend Sunday morning service. Amen. So before, amen, glory be to God, we go into the tithes and offering section. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. During this Bible study, amen. I'm going to open in a moment in prayer and after the tithes and offering uh, portion of the service, you will hear this great man of God taking God's podium to break the bread of life with us one more time this Thursday evening. Most beautiful for gracious Father, we do thank you and we praise you today, God. We thank you today, God, for another opportunity, God, in the name of Jesus that you caused us here at the Underground Christian Center to learn and to sit of you today, God. Father, we thank you today, God, that you are a holy God and you're righteous God today, God. Without holiness, no man can see you today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Father, we thank you today, God, for your word this morning, today, God. Your word this evening today, God, in the name of Jesus that's flowing out this place like living waters today, God. Father, we invite you even the more today, God. Settle in this place today, God. In the name of Jesus, move mightily today, God, upon the hearts of your people today, God. Prepare our hearts and minds today, God, to receive your word, God. In the name of Jesus, my God, your unfollowable word today, God, as you train us up in you today, God, that we can go out in the name of Jesus, my God, in Satan's kingdom, amen, and dismantles the lies today, God, that have been sown in the hearts of God's people today, God, through the power and the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit today, God. So we thank you right now today, God, in the name of Jesus, my God, we ask you in the name of Jesus, my God, to come in even more today, God. Purge us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness today, God. In the name of Jesus, my God, we thank you that you already set a stand of approval in us today, God. In the name of Jesus, my God, you already today, God, commissioned us today, God, to come into fellowship with you tonight today, God. Those that's viewing YouTube live and those that in, oh, Father God, in the sanctuary and live service today, God, you draw us into this place, God. In the name of Jesus, for you want to desire to speak to our heart and our minds today, God. In the name of Jesus, so we prepare our hearts and our minds today, God, to receive your word today, God, like never before today, God. Father, we ask you that you will bless Pastor Duff today, God, in the name of Jesus as he sit and represent you today, God, as he speak on your behalf to your to your people today, God. Father, have your way today, God. Move mildly upon his heart and his mind today, God. Touch him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet today, God, as he delivered your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together. Amen. Oh, we can do better than that. Amen. Come on, stand up for a holy and righteous God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I tell you what, glory be to God is a state representative. Glory be to God. Or one of your favorite singers come into the midst of the sanctuary. Amen. You will stand up on your feet and get excited. Amen. If I tell you to stand up on your feet, whether you're home or in the sanctuary, amen, to pay God some homage, you should be the first one to jump up for joy. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because God is in the midst of us. Amen. So come on, let's put our blessed hands together one more time. Amen. Amen. Now you're in the tithes and offering portion of the service. Amen. Be blessed. Be obedient to the voice of God. Amen. And watch God bless you. Oh, <laughs> 
Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Today is a great day. And I just want to thank each and every one of you taking the time to join us for this beautiful Bible study. Pastor P had shared some information with you. Some of you may not know exactly what she was speaking of, but I just want to bring some clarity to that. And as I'm doing that, please share the link, share, share at least five people, you know, share the link so that they could get a good understanding of the Bible. And we guarantee to make sure that you get a good understanding of the Bible. Many people like to talk about themselves, but no, we're going to talk about the word of God because we know it's the word of God that transforms lives. And glory be God, it renews you. Glory be creates a clean heart inside of you. And that's why it's so important as people of God that we pay attention to detail to what God is saying. Otherwise, we ought to lean into the word in order to get a good understanding of thy word. What Pastor P was speaking of, concerning the church, the divide, the split in the church and how many individuals uh, within the body of Christ is definitely uh, attacking one another and in agreement with uh, Beyonce utilizing Twiggy Clark um, song, you know, in the song that she called Church Girls. In this song, it is so provocative. The video is so provocative. The word lyrics are so disgusting. You know, it degrades the woman. It degrades a church woman. It degrades the preacher. It degrades righteousness. It degrades holiness. It degrades Christ himself. And so that's why it is so important that you understand that Bishop Wooden, Patrick L. Wooden Sr., had taken a stance to speak out against this. And because of that, many individuals have come out in support of him because they recognize, and I, we are one here at the Underground Christmas Center, and we recognize holiness is still right. right. And you know, and you don't, a a believer should not be mingling with an unbeliever because what happens, the unbeliever won't respect the God that you serve. They will misuse, they will misrepresent, glory be to God, in order to convince and woo others over to say it's okay to do this and do that when it's not okay. And as people of God, we got to take a stance for righteousness and understand righteousness. You cannot go ahead and mix righteousness with unrighteous. And that's why it's so important that we recognize that we got to stay focused on the scriptures. Stand on the word of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead us. Because what they did by, by Twiggy allowing her to example that, now she took that what was an anointed song and she perverted yes. that song. God not getting the glory out of that. Yes. Satan is getting the glory out of that. And then if there's a weak young lady within the body of Christ, now what's going to happen? She's going to be drawn out. You know, and and some people say, well, don't talk about, uh, um, don't talk about Beyonce. Well, I'm I'm, going to let you know that I I am not sorry and I do not apologize. I am taking a stance on what is right. That spirit that she possessed, the God that she worshiped is not the God that we worship. She's involved in devil worship. We involved with the true and living God. So I will take a stand and I will speak up against it because it's out of order. And the church should never be in agreement with the world. Glory be to God. Do get involved in things such as that. The church should not be doing that. So the church got to recognize that we were set apart. We was consecrated. We were anointed for a reason to do a great work, not to go ahead and to allow our gifts to be thrown out there amongst the pigs and then allow them to be stomped upon. No, we don't do that. And that's why as people of God, we have to be wiser. Yeah. And what the Clark, what, what the uh, Twiggy had done, she should have been wiser than that should and shouldn't have done that. That's you know, at all. You don't do that. You should pray first before you do anything. And I guarantee you, if prayer was done, she would have never done that by hearing God. If God spoke to her, because God would have told her, don't do it because it's going to be perverted. So that's why it's extremely important that we do things the way 
God say do it. And that's just for each and every one of you. But I don't care what you're involved in, whatever you do in life, God got to be first. You got to seek God first. Go ahead and be the guy. As, as Pastor P said, she, we tell our church, she tell our children constantly, you know, stay close to God. There's a reason why. Because we see the tendency of them drifting off at times. And, you know, and that drifting off could be, can cost them trem- a lot. It can, can cost them tremendously, you know, great loss in their life, even their soul. And that's why we like to encourage them, stay close, stick to the word. And regardless if you agree or disagree, that know what that, because you disagree with the word, that's your stuff. And that's why it's important that they stay close enough to recognize what's their stuff and repent from their stuff and embrace Jesus Christ. Because he is the way, the truth, and the light. There's no other way to the kingdom of God but through the son Jesus. So, we, well, so welcome once again. Welcome. And that's why we bring some clarity what was being said. And I just want to go ahead and let you know that it is time to dive back in the book of John. And I want you to go to chapter five, please. Chapter five of book of John, because that's extremely important for you to understand. We have to get into this word in order for you to get a good understanding in your walk. Because if your walk is not right, Everything else in life concerning you will be off. And that's why it's important that we be on point. I would give a shout out to uh, uh, Sister Karen. uh, Good to see you joining on tonight. Glory be to God. Down way down there in Maryland. We thank God for you. And we thank God for Cousin Allen. You know, glory be to God. Way down in North Carolina. And all the rest of our family and friends. We thank God for you. Matter of fact, I thank God. Let me get a shout out. I thank God for Mama way up there and over over there in Delaware, you know, so <laughs> down the road a few, about 35 minutes down the road, you know, so we just want to thank God for everyone that took time out to join. So we're going to get into this word right here in uh, um, John chapter five. We want to start at verse 16 because that's is, that is where we're going to start at. And that is important that we start right there. The Bible declares For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. What did he do on the Sabbath? He healed someone. So the Jews was upset. You had a bulk of the Jews upset because he healed someone. Now, that, that's, that is quite crazy because go to verse 17. I'm going to put these together here. And it goes on and says, but Jesus answered them. My father has been born working until now. My father, ha- my father has been working until now. And I have been working. Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father making himself equal with God. Now, there's a problem here. These Jews was upset. But to get a good understanding of these Jews, you must take a moment to go down history with me and allow me to share this with you. They was upset because he healed a lame man on a Sabbath. And he also acknowledged that God is his father. And that they've been working. Now, why would one get mad or upset with that? You may say, well, people get mad and upset today. If you say you following God and you follow the Holy Spirit, there's some people that would get upset with you today. They just like the Jews. They would get upset and get mad at you. Who do you think you are? Worshiping and going to church. Who, who do you think you are? And they will begin to look down on you. They will frown upon you because you decide to put God first and go to worship. And so we see here that these Jews was upset and they condemned him 
for healing and him making himself equal with God. Now, the two types of Jews that had an issue with him was the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, the Pharisees is a Jewish group mentioned is either collective or they or they looked at as individuals there. There's mentioned 98 times in the New Testament, but only 10 times in the Gospels that you even hear about the Pharisees right there. The root meaning is quite uncertain, but the but many of the scholars believe that the Hebrew meaning of this means to be separate or detach. Yes. Now that speaks volumes right there because that really shows you that they will detach from the truth. They was detached from God himself. Otherwise they was religious individuals. And, you know, religious individuals had the tendency of doing what they think they should be doing or doing what they feel like doing. Or they do what they believe they should be doing and study doing what God called and purposed them to do. So we begin to start seeing here that they separated themselves from from others because they wanted to maintain their purity. Otherwise, their own interpretation of the scriptures is what they wanted to believe in. That's the Pharisees. They wanted to believe their own interpretation. And I'm sure that many of you know somebody that believes in their own interpretation of the word. They got their own belief. And that's the problem right there. When you have your own understanding of the word and it haven't been interpreted properly to you, then now you begin to start believing a lie that you convince yourself of. That's right. And many individuals in the body of Christ, they believe in so many lies. For instance, I don't have to go to church. That's a lie. I don't have to go fellowship. That's a lie. That, that is a lie right there. I don't have to forgive. That's, that's a lie. That is a lie. No, you have to do those things. And many people will feel that they don't have to because, you know, I'm only human. But because you are human, don't give you an excuse or a reason why you could do what you want to do. Being a human is understand you was created in God's image and likeness. So that means that you should be doing what Christ does. But if you struggle with that, that means that you have your own interpretation of how you should be living. And how can you call yourself a Christian and you want to live the way you want to live? And I know I know I'm stepping on some toes right now, but that's OK. Because I'd rather teach the truth than make you get happy and then see if you're glad about something. I'd rather minister the truth to you. Why? So that you get a good understanding on what you should be doing and how you can advance in your walk. And it goes on and says this right here. They have their own interpretation. Now, also, when we look at these Sadducees, these also known as chief priests. Sadducees were a religious faction that upheld their exercise upheld and exercised their power in society in nearly every area, nearly every area, except the military. They, they have power because they was under the Romans. Mm -hmm. And so they had that Roman protection. The Romans gave them that yeah. feeling of, of being a leader, being like a, like, a, like a king. So they was like kings amongst their people. And, you know, so they was the head of the temple. Glory be to God, which was this, which was really sad when you got the wrong people in the head. Mm -hmm. They had control of most, the most important institutions. There was two of them at that time. And one was the Jerusalem temple known as Herod's temple. And also the Sanhedrin. That's the Jewish courts. The Sanhedrin. So the sad part about it is that now you have these crooked and corrupt individuals mm -hmm. who was deep into the politics of that time. 
Why? Because of their greed. It wasn't about serving God. It wasn't about living for God because they only believe in the five books, the Torah and parts of that. They had nothing else to do with anything else. And they didn't even believe in that completely the way they should have. And they was misinterpreting what they was reading in order to fit their needs. Don't that sound familiar that we got a lot of people today that want to preach in order to get finances because they're only concerned about finances. They're only concerned about you giving them. That's all. So they want to preach messages and teach messages that's only going to make you happy to give instead of teaching you properly that your soul is right with God. And that their lives were transformed, that they would no longer be part of the evilness and be a part of the wickedness that's around here. But they will grab hold and draw close to the kingdom of God because they desire to be in the presence of the kingdom of God. So they begin to start pulling down heaven here to earth by living a righteous life. Yeah. See, when people love God, that's what they do. But when they focus on monies, they're only going to tell you what you want to hear. They will not tell you the Bible itself because the Bible teaches us a lot about repentance. The Bible teaches us a lot about turn from our wicked ways. The Bible corrects us a whole lot. And because we also in this grace dispensation do not make it OK for you to be sinful. So the Bible is continuously correcting us. Why? It is purifying us. It's perfecting us. It's allowing us to see ourselves in the wickedness and ugliness that others have performed. It teaches us and shows us these things so that we not to do those things. That if we see these things, we repent and turn away from them things because God desires greater for us. See, that's why it's extremely important, people of God, that we recognize that we cannot have this Sadducee spirit. That we focus on wealth and that wealth is what corrupted them. And they more focus on wealth than the word of God. So we must understand that these people was evil and it was wicked and it was upset because now Jesus right now is flipping their worlds upside down. Jesus now is turning their worlds all upside down. He messing everything up. And they don't like that. Because they love getting their money. They love getting attention. And when you become a true believer of God, you don't focus on attention for yourself. But you focus on directing attention to Jesus. You believe in giving God the glory. It's not about you. You don't go around wanting people to pat you on your back and you want to get around and say it's all about parades, it's all about me, me, me. No, you will give God the glory. Although God uses you, you will give God the glory. See, when you want all the attention, now there's a problem. Now, I, I really like watching bodybuilders. There's some bodybuilders that I follow. I really watch, love and enjoy them. But I enjoy this one brother who, and you have a few of them that's Christians on there. I enjoy this one brother that always give God the glory. And the Lord allowed him to be champion twice, back to back. And he always giving God the glory, yeah. constantly. During his videos, during his interviews, he constantly represented the kingdom of God because he met a woman that was saved. And that woman was a blessing to his soul that he gave his life to Christ. And you begin to start seeing this man life transform the more. And he's so appreciative that that he give God the glory. He don't focus on that. I am an Olympic champion. He don't go around telling people that he goes around letting people know that Jesus is the way. And as he continued to lift up Jesus, the Lord continues to lift them up. See, that's why it's so important, people of God, that we learn to be humble and to allow God to get the glory. Let's not be like a Pharisee and a Sadducee. Don't let's not be like them. But let's be the way Christ is. Let's focus on our father's business and let's stop doing what we want to do. Amen. 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 So we begin to start seeing now here that these individuals begin to hate Jesus even the more because now Jesus threatened their belief system. And when you get wrapped up in the word of God and you really get tied up in the word of God, now the people get, get upset and the enemy will even get upset because of the fact is that now you are disrupting people belief systems. Yeah. 
And when you in, when you get involved in tearing up people's belief system, oh, they're going to come up against you. Well, that's not what God said. That's not what the Bible said. And the Bible clearly, the Bible clearly says that. But people tell you that's not what it says, but that's what it is saying. And because they don't have a proper relationship with God, otherwise that they be filled with Holy Spirit, they don't get the true revelation. See, when people that have this Holy Spirit feel, they get true revelations versus someone who do not have Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is the revealer and it reveals unto us the heart of God, the mind of God. It reveals unto us. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. And so that's why you got to understand that. So now when you turn up this belief system, people get all mad. They get frustrated, they get upset because now Christ is exposing that your teachings are wrong. What you go around telling these people is wrong. And when you start telling people that what they're doing is wrong, people get mad. Yes. But I'd rather for someone to tell me that I'm wrong than me go to hell. I'd rather for somebody to let me know something because I'd rather avoid hell. But see, some people worry about people feeling so much, they won't tell the truth. And if you paid attention to men's service on the other night, glory be to God, on last night, I, I hit, really hit some things core dealing with the man. And I know many men, have, many men struggle with that message that I shared because I was telling the truth. I was hitting the core. And when you begin to hit the core and tear up people's belief systems, boy, people get mad and upset. That, uh, uh that's not what, no, no, no. They get mad with you. But I'd rather for people to get mad at me today Amen. and love God tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. Because as a servant, it's my job is to deliver the mail and pray that you open that mail up and allow God now to enter into your hearts. So we go and we, and we go on here. We go on here. And the Bible begins to start saying now here in verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said to them, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. The son can do nothing yes. of him of himself. But what he sees the father do. See, the son does what the father does. Mm -hmm. See, the son does what the father does. Look how the son honors the father. And then watch this right here. But he sees the father do for whatever he does. The son also does in like manner for the father loves the son and shows him all the things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel that you may marvel. So we begin to start seeing some very interesting things here that God is pleased with the son. Yeah, man. Amen. And the son loves the father by doing the will of the father. Yes. And so that's why it's extremely important that we as people of God begin to start doing what God called and purposed us to do. And that is get ourselves in position that we may learn the will and the ways of the Lord. And it goes on and says this. For the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son. For the judge, the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son. Now, now God would judge. Now, what is that? God would judge the world through Jesus. And a lot of people go around, don't judge me. Let me, you better help, hope somebody judge you now so that you can repent. Because when you got to get judged by Christ, it's too late. You cannot repent. Amen. Amen. And, and, and some bad, terrible teaching from the pulpit went out and they start doing that. It is these people that just go ahead and say, no, it's OK to do this. It's OK to do that. You can't talk about this person. You can't talk about that. You can't. Talk, no, you can talk about that spirit. And that's what Bishop L. Wooden, what Patrick L. Wooden was doing. He was talking about that spirit that Beyonce has, that foul, demonic, wicked and evil spirit. And so he was exposing that. And that's why it's extremely important that we as people of God recognize that it is important that we expose these things because maybe she could repent if she desired to repent. 
If she desire to turn from that evilness, that demonic worship, she, she could go forward and ask Jesus Christ to be her savior and then live for God. So I'd rather for it to be judged now so I could see myself. Yes. But Jesus is going to be doing some judging. He's going to be handling our father's business when it comes to the judging. <laughs> and I know some of you, you, you sit there, uh, 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 you know, oh, I'm good, I'm good. Oh, you, you'll see. If your pastor anointed and your pastor can see evil, what makes you think what God's going to see? What makes you think, what, what, what is God going to see? If your pastor anointed, and your pastor is not one of the ones that just speak for the green, but your pastor speaks from the heart of God. And if your pastor sees evil and tells you it's evil, who are you to sit there and to dispute that? You're not going to be able to dispute that with God. So that's why it's important that we begin to evaluate ourselves and to turn from our wicked ways. Look at the mirror. In the mirror that some people, you know, some people like looking at mirrors, like looking at themselves in the mirrors. But maybe, you know what? I could give you a hint what you can do. Pick the Bible up and look at it and allow it to give you a mirror reflection of yourself. And see who do you look like, Satan, or do you look like God? Look at yourself. Evaluate yourself. Who you look like, Satan, or do you look like God? Mirror, mirror, mirror. Who am I looking at? And who do I look like? And I have a question that when you're doing that, ask yourself, who's my daddy? Because your lifestyle will determine who your daddy is. So let's look at this. Verse 23 says this, that all shall honor. For the father judges no one, but has committed all judgment to the son that what verse 23, that all shall honor the son just as they honor who the father. He who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. So let me tell you something tonight, people of God, if you have a problem with Jesus, if you have a problem with walking as Jesus walked, if you have a problem believing that Jesus is the way, the truth and the light, that he is the restorer, that he is the sin breaker. If you have a problem believing and a problem with receiving that, then you have a problem with the father. That's right. And if you have a problem with the son, you know that you're not going to heaven. Because if you have a problem with the son, you have a problem with the father. And so that is why it's extremely important, people, God, that you understand that, that you cannot split the two. I love God. I love the, I love the son. No, I don't, I don't honor God, but I honor Jesus. I don't honor Jesus, but I, I honor God. And, and then, then you disrespect Holy Spirit. But understand this, what Jesus was able to do is because of the Holy Spirit that dwelled in him that was given from the Father. And so you got to understand the importance of loving each and appreciating each of them because they all operate with one accord. They all operate in unison. They all operate in holiness and righteousness. So how can you say that you have the Holy Ghost and you're still doing sin? See, you work together, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And that's why all of you that think you could do this on your own, you can handle this walk on your own. I don't need fellowship. I don't need to be in the church. I don't need God like that. I don't. That's the problem right there. You will never get in position to where God wants you to be at. Matter of fact, understand this. Your dreams, your desires and your blessings that God has for you will keep running away from you. As you look like you're getting closer, it's going to move because you're not in position to receive what God has. And God will not give you something that you're not even worthy of. You got to be right with God. And it goes on to say, so, so no, notice the Trinity in Jesus. The father loves the son and the, and, and, and the father honors the son. 
That's something else, huh? The father honors the son. And the father loves the son. Why? Because look at the son. The son operates with one accord. That's right. The son does what pleases the father. I have a question for you, all the sons out there. Are you doing what you're supposed to do to please the father? And matter of fact, are you pleasing your natural father by doing the right thing? My father was not lined up. My father was not walking where he should have been walking at. And I mean standing flat-footed on the gospel and being the man of God that he was supposed to be. Yes, come on now. But guess what? I still honor my father. And yes, my father and our history was a little, a little rough in, in the early years and in some of my latter. But one thing about it, I learned to love my father unconditionally as the same way that, that I am love. And I realized that for God to love me unconditionally, I got to repent if I desire to go to heaven. And I repented unto God for having a heart like that. And then let me tell you something. My father and I bonded as one. And, and I honor. I did what I had to do to please my father. And can I tell you something today? How I live today? I'm honoring my father. Because I desire my father legacy to go ahead and be positive. I desire that our people to recognize and see that from my father's stock came righteousness. So that's why I focus on living right. I focus on righteousness and holiness. Because regardless of what anyone else done, I'm going to live righteous. I'm going to live holy. I'm going to love God. I'm going to line up with the word of God because that's my life. That's what I do because I love the father in my father. See, when you love, you do what you're supposed to do. And that's why some of you out there, you say you love your parents. Your love really is demonstrated on how you carry yourself. How you conduct yourself says that you honor and respect your parents. I'm going to help somebody right here. My mother or my father, my stepfather or my stepmother, none of them can say, or my mother-in-law, none of them can say that I disgrace God in any way. Not one. Not one of them can say that I was an embarrassment unto them and to my children once I got saved. After I got saved, not one of them can say that. Because after I got saved, not one can say that. Because I live my life for the God. Yes. Malcolm was crucified and the spirit of God rose up inside and I began to live for the spirit of God Amen. because it was no longer was my will, but it was his will. Yes. Now, see, some of you, you struggle in that area because you still want to do you. It's all about you. How can you take advantage of people? How, it's, it's all about you, what you want to do in life. It's about your vision, not God's, but your vision. So it's all about you. And see, when we learn to repent and turn away from that negative thinking, then we'll really start showing that we honor and love our parents and we love God by doing the will of God. So people of God, we must understand that it's no longer about you. When you call yourself a believer, it's about him, not you. And if you put him first, he'll take care of you. Glory be to God. So, so, and as we go on, look what it says. Most assuredly, at verse 24, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word yes. and believes, and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, uh oh mayday mayday <laughs> somebody going down <laughs> somebody ego is going down right now somebody belief system is going down right now mayday mayday somebody's going down and that's a good thing because the bible declares 
Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. See, everlasting life comes through Jesus Christ. That's right. And if you don't hear his word, glory be to God, excuse me. If you don't hear that word and believe the word that is spoken, then you won't have that connection. You won't have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. See, you can't be religious and expect to go to heaven. You have to have a relationship. Because it goes on and says, most truly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. But he who passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now it is when the dead will hear the voice of the son of God and those who hear will live. Now, understand this right here, people of God. We see here that Jesus imparts life. Eternal life. He imparts eternal life because you get eternal life through Jesus Christ. And you also he raises the dead. Some to everlasting joy and others to some everlasting death. Yes. Mm -hmm. You got to decide what you want. <laughs> but most of all, what you got to understand. He judges all men. I know some of you got a problem with judge, judge, judge. Don't judge me. I mean, society mess you up. Yes, he did. And no one got to judge you. If you if you if you out there um, drinking excessively and somebody call you a drunk, you can't get mad at them. That's right. You're a drunk. That's right. Your action speaks. If you run around. Uh, uh, using heroin and someone say uh, you just use that heroin and somebody call you a junkie. You can't get mad at them. Don't judge me. Who you think you are? You sin too. Well, okay, let's talk about this sin. You being a drug addict. Are you or aren't you? And if you are, it is what it is. So no one really judge you. You judge yourself by your actions. If a man or woman go out there and sleep around, what you going to call them? Oh, they just somebody got a flesh problem. That's all. I know, how, I know that's how some of you think. Oh, they just got a flesh problem. They grow out of it. You never grow out of sin. Nope. That's a lie from Satan. You have to get delivered from sin. And so if you desire to be recognized by Christ and to reflect Christ amongst other amongst other people, you have to live the life of righteousness. You can't just live any old kind of way and think it's OK. So we see that here and then let, let, let's let's just listen a little bit more, just a little bit more, because for as the father has life in himself, so he has granted the son to have life in himself. And has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man. Yes. Judgment. He is a son of man and he's going to judge man. And you don't think you need to get it right? And you don't think you need to be right? Oh, you're going to get judged. And the sad part about it, you're going to get exposed on earth and get judged by Jesus. Now, now you can call yourself trying to expose me all you want. You only thing you're going to do is you're going to expose Christ. That's all you're going to do. And I'm glad and I'm glad about that because I love for God to get the glory. Yes. I love for God to get the glory. And look at this. And then it goes, I said, do not verse 28. Do not marvel at this for the hours coming, which all who are in the graves will hear his voice. 
<laughs> do not marvel at this, but understand this, for the hour come of which, which all who are in the graves will, will hear his voice. And come forth, those who have done good, to the resurrection of life, and to those who have done evil, to the resurrection of condemnation. People of God, judgment is going to occur. And that judgment is going to be Jesus Christ. And that's why it's so important today that you learn to understand that I got to evaluate me and see where I'm at. And I got to get it right. I can't say I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm a work on this. No, you need to just do it. Because if you keep procrastinating, it may be that time when you driving down the street, you might not make it home. You could be walking down the street. You might not make it home. You could be asleep and not wake up. And then you don't have the chance to repent. And that's why you have to make right with God now. By accepting his son, Jesus Christ. Verse 30 says, I can of myself do nothing. As I as I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous. Because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the father who sent me because he's righteous. So my judgment is righteous because I only seek to do the will of God and no other will. And that's why it's extremely important, people of God, that we recognize that I have to do the will of God if I desire to be blessed. Verse 31 says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Now, I want you to see how 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 committed and how unified Christ and God is and how Holy Spirit, how they all is unified together. I want you to see how they all are unified together as one. For I bear witness of myself. My witness is not true. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me. And I know that witness which he witnessed of me is true. Look at, look at, look at this, verse 33. Who was that? You have sent, you have sent to John and he has borne witness to the truth. What John? John the Baptist. Yeah. He witnessed. He was a witness. There's a testimony of Jesus Christ right there. He's a witness right there. And then let, look at the next one right here. Yet I did, I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. He who was the burning and shining lamp and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witnesses than John's. John did a great work. He acknowledged what John did. John did not seek attention for himself. But John the Baptist gave God the glory. Yes, yes, yes. He spoke of the light to come and the light that was. He glorified Christ. See, as a believer, we should be glorifying Christ. John the Baptist did. He didn't look for that credit. He just glorified God. See, when you are tuned in to the Holy Spirit and you desire to do the will of God, it ain't a, it's not about you. It's about God. Now, now, now you must understand that John the Baptist endured a lot. Yes. John the Baptist endured a lot. Eventually, his head was taken because he spoke up against sin. <laughs> See, he didn't compromise with sin. He spoke up against sin. And my question is, how many of you is willing to take a stand for righteousness? And when you see sin, you call it what it is. But as you call it what it is, also encourage that person to repent and to turn from their wicked ways. See, that's a true witness right there. John the Baptist did it. He did it very well. And won many people over, baptized many people. So, but look at this here. 
But 36 says this, but I have a greater witness than John yes. for the works which the father has given me to finish. The very works that I do bear witness of me that the father has sent me and the father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form, but you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent him, you did not believe. And many people do not believe Jesus today because they believe in their own belief system. They believe what they want to believe. But he's saying here now that many people don't believe at all because they didn't accept Jesus. They didn't believe in it about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we must understand, people of God, is that if we desire to please God, go be to God, then we ought to focus on and acknowledge in Jesus Christ as our Savior. Because it's, the, it's four testimonies concerning Jesus. One, one from John the Baptist, two from his own world, three from the Father, because his own world, the miracles and all that he had done. Three, from the Father and also from the scriptures. So we begin to start seeing here that there's testimonies concerning Jesus. And look, look, at, look at this. Look at this. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 20. No, verse 39. I'm going to read verse 29. You search the scriptures for in them. You seek. You think you have eternal life. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. Come on now. And these things are they which testi testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me. You think you know scripture, but you're not willing to come to me. That you may have life. Because you'd rather do everything else but give yourself to Jesus Christ. I do not receive. I do not receive honor from men. Mm -hmm. But I know you. That you do not have the love of God in you. I don't want to. I never want to hear that. Verse 43. I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me. If any, if another comes in his own name, you will receive. Now, now, now. I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me. Yes. You got a problem because I come in my father's name. I call him father. You have a problem with that. Who you think I am? Because I call him father. Mm -hmm. Now, I love calling him Abba father. Yes, father. Because I love him that much. He's my father. I live for him. And it goes on and says, I have come in my father's name and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. If if LeBron come in his own name, if Beyonce come in her own name, if these people you seeking to be like you, yeah, you in their own name, you believe them. If Mr. Money come at you, wealth, finances, yes. greed, things, you believe in them. You see the difference? Yep. You won't acknowledge and recognize he who came in the name of the father, but you recognize he that come in the name of the world. Yes. You honor the world, but you dishonor God. You can believe. How can you believe? Who receive honor from one another and do not seek the honor that comes from only God. Do do not think that I shall accuse you to the father. And there is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believe Moses, you would believe me for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe in his writings, how will you believe in my words? You can pick in what you want to believe. You got to believe through all the word. 
You cannot pick. I want to believe this, not believe that, one, believe that. No, you have to believe all the word. Because the word speaks of Jesus. And people of God, this is a time that people are putting out all kinds of stuff out there. And I mean, there's things that sound good. It is wrong. They, they're up there teaching messages in order to make you feel good. Just so happy. And they wrong. Because we as the people of God have got to recognize that it's the word of God that should be taught. Don't be twisting the scriptures up. Learn to recognize when the word is being twisted. Learn to recognize when a word has been compromised because of the person that is sharing it is not living right and their thinking is not tuned in with Holy Spirit. This is a time that we need to wake up people of God. Mm -hmm. If you desire to have a relationship, you're going to devote yourself to God through the Son. And too many of us are devoting to, to other things. We devote, it's football season. Many people devote themselves to the football season, the games. They won't miss a game. They won't make sure they're watching the game. They do everything to rearrange their schedule in order to sit there and to watch a game. People are, will go out their way and go buy these tickets to go watch a game. They'll go out there and buy clothing that represent that team. They will do all of that. But when it comes to God, they won't put no effort in it at all. Oh, he knows my heart, and they just throw him any old thing. Mm, 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 mm. Help us. And many of us throw, I mean, just begin to put everything else before God. Mm. But yet we said we love him. People of God, if you love him, you honor his son. If you love him, you honor his word. If you love him, you repent of any evilness and wickedness. If you love them, you would destroy and annihilate your belief system and understand that the word of God supersedes anything that you could create on your own. See, when you're serious about this walk, then you realize that he must come first. It's not about me. It's not about me. You know how some people just love to, and I remember I just love to keep my hair nice and tight. I, I used to, and I don't worry about that much anymore. I just shave now. <laughs> I just have my boy cut me, fade me, do all of that. But you know, just that life with my hair, how my hair just begin to fade. Some people are more fortunate they have it, and it stays with them. My fade. But the thing about it, it's just like life. We begin to put value in more into things that's going to fade away. And instead, put value in the word of God, which will never fade. We have to get right. And people of God, Jesus is soon to come. And I pray that you surrender yourself. Don't be like a Pharisee and a Sadducee. You just want to get power, a position. You want to get authority. And misuse it and believe only what you want to believe. You have to believe all this word. You have to want to commit yourself, surrender yourself, so that God could do what He desires to do in your life. It's time out for being religious. It's time out for that. And He knows my heart. Don't judge me. He's my co pilot. And, you know, we could go on and on. He should never be your co-pilot. He should be your pilot. He should always should be leading you. You know, we, 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 we got to make sure we're doing this thing right. Our heart is right. We got to make sure we're right. Because Jesus is soon to come. So I'm so grateful and thankful you sharing your time with us tonight. Pastor P about to come on up and she's going to share some nuggets with you. And the nuggets is like many things that the Lord had laid upon my heart to share. You know, many times she jots what she can jot down and then she'll go ahead and, and share that with you so that you could reference these points. 
you know, because we always encourage you to watch over the message just in case you miss something. And also have the nuggets so that you, when you're going back, that you have these points that you can hear it for again. So we'll have Pastor P come on up and, and share these nuggets with you at this time. Glory be to God. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together. Amen. What a fantastic job. Amen. That Pastor Duff, amen, come on, did tonight for the underground Bible study. I tell you, I'm telling you, he said so many spiritual nuggets, amen, that I always like to jot them down. It'd be so much fruitful nuggets that I cannot always drop it down enough church so that's why we implored you to go ahead and view this lesson over and over again i guarantee god will bless you amen and you will receive some more nuggets amen so pastor duff amen had mentioned people talk about themselves but we need to talk about the word of god he also said holiness is still right amen he also said believers should not be hanging with unbelievers and that is so true amen glory be to god because when you hang around with unbelievers they will taint you amen he also said you can't mix righteousness with unrighteousness. He also said the church should never be in agreement with the world. And we know that to be true. He also said we should pray first before we do anything. And that is so true. How many of y'all pray first before even engaging in doing something? You need to start praying. Amen. Glory be to God. He also said we ought to seek God first, which is so true. He said there is not another way to God but through Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot come to God without accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. He also said people will get upset with you when you put God first. And that is so true. Amen. He also said religious people tend to do what they think they want to do. Amen. Or what they should do. Amen. That's the wrong way of thinking. He also said many people in the body of Christ believe in a lie. For example, they don't have to attend church service or they don't even have to forgive. That is a lie. Amen. He also said religious people have their own interpretation of the word of God. And that is so true, Pastor. He said a lot of people want to preach messages that will make you give money. Amen. He also said when people Love God, they live a righteous lifestyle. Amen. He also said the Bible corrects us in order to perfect us. And that is so true. He also said we cannot have the Sadducee spirit that focus on wealth only. Glory be to God. He also said believers of God should focus on God, not on self. Amen. Glory be to God. He also said we ought to focus on our heavenly father's business. He also said the Holy Spirit is the revealer and reveals the heart of God, which is so true. Amen. He is the spirit of truth the holy spirit he also said when you begin to tell people that they are wrong they get they will get mad at you why because you're coming against their belief system amen he also said jesus does not uh jesus does what god does amen basically amen he only does what his he see his father does amen he also said we must get in position to know the will of god and that is so true amen and we get in position by why coming to bible study come in fellowship with god amen come fellowship him in the word amen and in prayer as well he also said god will judge the world through jesus christ and that is true he also said it's important to expose darkness so people can repent amen glory be to god hallelujah he also said it's a important to evaluate ourselves and turn from our wicked ways we thank the lord this evening amen he also said your lifestyle will determine who your daddy is amen glory be to god i'm asking you church this evening who's your daddy glory be to god hallelujah he also said if you have a problem with jesus you have a problem with god that is so true he also said the father son and the holy spirit works in conjunction with one another he also said god will not give you something that you you are not worthy of and that is so true amen glory be to god you be praying for stuff amen and you're not ready to receive it your heart is still wrong your heart is in the wrong place that's why you did not receive your desires as of yet amen glory be to god because god sees that you're not worthy amen or you're going to mistreat that gift amen that he wants to give you he also said jesus uh does what pleases the father god and that is so true he also said when you love you do you do what you're supposed to do he also 
said this, how you conduct yourself states that you honor your father and mother. He also said, it's not about you. It's about God. Amen. Glory be to God. He also said, everlasting life comes to Jesus Christ. He also said, you can't be religious and expect to go to heaven. You must have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. He also opposed this question. You must decide what you want. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What is it that you want? Amen. Glory be to God. If you want to live for God, amen, live through God. Amen. He also said, you judge yourself by your actions. And that's so true. Amen. Glory be to God. He also said, you must get delivered from sin. And that is so true. Amen. He also said, we must do the will of God if we desire to be blessed. He also said, as a believer, we must glorify God. Amen. Glory be to God with our whole life. Amen. He also opposed this question. How many will stand up for righteousness and call sin as it is? Glory be to God. He also said, if we want to please God, we must acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm almost finished. He also said, when you have the world, the world, you dishonor God. When you honor the world, you dishonor God. He also said, you can't pick and choose what you want to believe in the word of God. You must believe the whole word in its full totality. He also said, if you love God, you honor Jesus, you honor his word, and you will repent. He also said, the word of God supersedes anything that you create on your own. Amen. He also said, we put value on things that will fade away, but not in the word that will never fade away. Amen. Last but not Definitely not least. He said God should always be leading us, which is so, so very true. Amen. These are some spiritual nuggets. Amen. And I jot down. He has so many fruitful things coming out of his mouth. Amen. This is the time. Amen. Glory be to God. If you want to, amen, join this church. Amen. As the church doors are open. Amen. And if you desire to join Team Jesus and be a part of the Underground Christian Center, we invite you to do this at this time. The ministry is focused on doing the will of God in his purpose alone. Amen. If you would like to be a part of the Underground Christian Center, then please drop a message in the live chat and state, I would like to be a part of God's work here at the Underground Christian Center. Or you can glory be to God. Hallelujah. Call us at the church number at area code 302-553-1589 and we will reach out to you once again. Amen. Our church number is area code 302-553-1589. Amen. Come on, let's put our blessed hands together. Amen. As we welcome Pastor enough. Amen. Glory be to God to close us out in this week's session. Amen. Glory be to God Bible study. Amen. Come on, you're in the hands Amen. of Pastor Duff. Amen. 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 Hey, people of God, let's not forget on Saturday, we have the Pillar Talk with Pastor P. Love for you to come on and join in. Glory be to God and, and tune on in. Men, tune in because how you know how to operate with a woman if you don't know how a woman operates? You know, so also let's uh, reach out and let's reach out. Come on, let's and let's reach out. I'm gonna repeat it again. Let's reach out. Amen. Glory be to God, and let's spread this word, and let's share this word with individuals, regardless of what their race is, cultural or financial position. Let, help us to spread this word, and we want you to go ahead and take time to like and subscribe yes. and and do the, all the good things that you can do because we want to promote the word of God. This is not about me, not about Pastor P. It's all about the underground Christian center representing the kingdom of God yeah. because it's bigger than us. So we just want to encourage you to reach out and, and join us on Saturday at 10 o'clock live. Glory be to God. And also join us on Sunday, 10 o'clock live. There is a word that the Lord has given to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. So we want you to join us. We appreciate you. We value. We love you. And we are so thankful for each of you. And, uh, and by the way, Sister Tina, God bless you. And you know, so just thank you, each and every one of you. We want to go ahead and pray. And because I desire that the Lord bless you like never before. I desire to see your world turn up for the good. Glory be to God. I desire your soul to be right with God. 
So we want to take a moment and pray at this time. Lord, Father God, thank you for every viewer that's viewing God. We thank you, Father God. We pray, God, that you will touch their hearts and minds, God, that you will do a work in their life, God, that will transform them, Father God, from the old to the new, God, that you create within them a clean heart and renew them the right spirit, that it may be pleasing and acceptable unto you, O Father God. We pray, O Father God, that whatever been hindering them, whatever been holding them back, God, be bound and broken, O Father God, in the name of Jesus, that they're able to move freely doing what you call and purpose them to do God so Lord God we thank you right now for healings we thank you for deliverance we thank you right now for revelation we thank you for clarity we thank you for understanding God we thank you for souls being saved God so Lord God continue to have your way oh Father God continue to shift the foundations oh Father God and oh God continue to make hold oh Father God in the name of Jesus we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise in Jesus name we pray amen, amen. have a blessed one amen. and we see you soon